you want to know what the Milan Art Mastery program is like and I've got you covered. I'm just going to show you all the artworks or assignments that we made within one month um, along with some tips that I think might be helpful for you. So actually the tips start before the assignment show starts. Because my tip number one is sign up for the waitlist. You're not going to be forced to sign up for the program if you sign up for the waitlist. But sign up for the waitlist because you get a bunch of information for free. And it's also a bunch of information um, and assignments actually to do before you would start the the actual program and uh, one of it is for example how to set up your studio which i thought was extremely helpful um, and also how to build an easel like this which i also thought was very helpful because i didn't have a huge easel like that and it's so practical it's so amazing tip number two when you build the easel be mindful about how high you place this board they do give you a number but i thought you know some people are taller some people are shorter um so i thought i'm just gonna make it right for myself that being said if anything i would now build it a little lower i thought it was gonna you know i don't want it too low because that would hurt my back if i'm all the way back down here but you are very seldom down here painting also you could pull up a chair um, if that was the case but also it's much easier if the if the board is a little lower you can always put a box or or whatever on it to raise a canvas that you want to be higher right so make it a little lower if you can um, than what I did I think um, and you know be mindful of how big the paintings you, you, you want to paint uh, are going to be. Um, also, if it's too high, actually my arm started, I'm not used to, to um, painting where I wasn't, now I am, um, while standing. And so my arm would really get actually quite tired um, if it's too high, what you're doing all the time, right? Um, so far, I haven't felt the need to cut off the legs yet, but I might at some point, we will see. So week number one, um, two very easy line work assignments. Um, one was a, a brush, your own hand holding a brush, just line work. And this shoe, which is also, uh, it's, it's large, right? <laughs> you don't have to make it quite as large, but I actually recommend it. Um, and you learn with this one how to use the scale tool. Now I made this myself. Um, because I didn't um, find one to buy. Um, the one I, I then bought is, is tiny and is plastic. I like this one much better and it's really easy to make it yourself if you can. So that is an option since it doesn't have to be a precision instrument. Now the tip isn't for making the actual tool, but how to use it. They do tell you how to use it, but not until like the third lesson of where you're using it. And it's actually super important to be mindful about how to hold it. So you wanna make sure you're not pointing um, the scale tool in. So it should always be perpendicular. I hope that's the right word. When you're using it, and measuring what you're seeing. There's always a tendency to do that um, and then transfer it. And that doesn't work. It, it, you're going to be really confused because it's not going to work. So be very mindful. Um, the arm has to always be outstretched. You, you want to look at with the same eye at all times, um, at the same distance. But this this is one of the most important things. Do not do any of this. Just keep it perpendicular, OK? And your first oil painting, for a lot of people, and for me, first oil painting in my life. Um, it's done in three stages. Um, each layer um, has to be dry before you continue. And that was a big issue for me because uh, my layers wouldn't dry. 
This was due to many reasons. I have old oil paints that I got from somebody, never used them, and I have a medium, a painting medium, which I have had no idea what it is, and then I used the wrong solvent. And I'm also painting on boards, whoops, <laughs> boards, not canvas. And all of that, ex along with the very cold and humid weather that is uh, happening right here, um, that really, really extended my, the drying time uh, of my oil painting. All of that being said, if you can in any way buy the, the oil mastery kit that Milan Art sells for the program, do it. It's gonna save you a lot of time and possibly also money. It's definitely not more expensive than if you were to go out and buy every single thing that you need. And if you buy their kit, you have everything you need. And I kept having to, you know, improvise with the colors um, and with the medium. Like I said, I had a solvent that wasn't working. Um, and you're always questioning why things aren't working and you're not sure is it because the materials are wrong or or what's the problem um, so just buy the kit it, um, I think it's a great deal I know it seems expensive but oil painting is kind of expensive so I would suggest go out and buy it. I then figured out a way um, how to do things um, after the second or third painting um, also drying times got a little better because I was using the right medium. Um, and I like using these boards because I got them from uh, artists who were uh, selling their stuff that they didn't need anymore. And they sold this stuff to me for a really great price. And I do find it important to have really good material, but it shouldn't be so amazingly expensive that you get hesitant about using it. So I find it a fine line between, you know, like get the most expensive oil paint that you can barely afford, uh, then you're gonna be all stingy with it and you're not gonna dare to experiment. Um, so find that line for you, um, whatever your financial situation is and however you are, <laughs> how you are built, you know. Um, you want to give yourself good material, but it shouldn't be so great and so expensive that you don't dare making mistakes. Another oil painting. This is from a source. You get to choose um, the whatever from about 20 different ones, probably. Whichever one speaks to you most or you like most. I had a lot of trouble again, uh, just with, with the materials, because solvent and everything, I've already told you that. In this week, there were also, again, drawing lessons. I suggest you always do your first session of the week um, with the oil paintings, because it does need the drying time. So don't waste your Monday or Tuesday session on drawing. Um, if you could be doing oil painting, if you could start the oil painting, because mine needed more than two days to dry. And so it was really a matter of getting it finished within the week. So start with the oil painting, then move on to the drawing while the oil painting is drying. Tip number six already. Um, you might want to pre-watch all the lessons involved with one painting. So. There were three lessons for this painting because three layers and I find it very beneficial to know what the second layer and the third layer, layer is going to bring um, to know how careful to be with the first layer. It was also, I, I observed that with, uh, with this, this was also by a source, not everybody paints the same bird. Um, but the first layer, some people made amazing first layers, um, super detailed, and it really all gets covered up. So it's good to know that, right? So you can judge what is important in each layer and how much detail really is needed, right? Because you might be wasting time. That being said, by the way, I needed 
pretty much exactly the, the amount of time that they always suggested. Um, I guess for some people that's a stretch, um, but it can be done. <laughs> oh, and there were the pears. I almost forgot those. Um, <laughs> look at the, I used crappy paper, as you can see. Uh, and my tip here is to see the negative shapes. Negative shapes, they, do, they don't talk about that so much and I know for me that was one of the most important pieces of information I was given. <laughs> um, so a negative shape is, so the positive shape would be the pair itself and this pair itself. The negative shape is for example the shape that is created between those two pairs. The reason why that works so well if you look at that is that um, it gets you, I, I assume, it gets you out of your left brain which knows what shape a pair has um, and it gets you into your left, uh, right brain because that's kind of a random shape that that exists between these two pairs and that really helps you see things uh, the way they are it helps you see angles the way they are it helps you judge whether the positive shapes that you drew are actually accurate uh, to what you see in the source uh, the other tip this was crappy paper as you can I was not paying very much attention to it either because I knew this is not a masterpiece. Um, I never intended to, to draw a masterpiece. Um, as much as I love drawing, I was not really looking forward to, to doing this exercise, even though I do like it now. Um, so drawing paper, there are so much different kinds of drawing papers out there. Uh, you really have to find the one you like best. Uh, this had a pretty rough surface and um, it picks up um, the structure, I mean the, the graphite picks up the structure from the paper, which I really like. Uh, the paper itself though is pretty windy, you wouldn't be able to sell this probably. Not that I want it to. Um, so you want to give yourself the material that is good enough for you to be able to create a masterpiece. You never know if it's going to happen accidentally, right? <laughs> um, not also because if you're if you work on crappy paper, it's practically impossible to create a really really good piece of art. Um, so you want to set yourself up for success. Um, at the same time, this is the next tip: do not expect yourself to make masterpieces all the time. If you do, or if you expect that of yourself, you're not going to be able to move on uh, within the time that they suggest. Like if they say spend one and a half hours, no more than that, on doing this assignment. Um, if, if you expect yourself to make a masterpiece within that time, you're not going to be able to move on. You're not going to be, be able to just say, okay, been there, done that learned my lesson um, and you're gonna just get stuck over assignments and that's kind of not the point in in those first three months um, you know the, the the masterpieces where you can speak your own voice that comes later this is just about getting the techniques done um, getting all that out of your way then we're already in week three so we have cardboard boxes. Uh, cardboard boxes. These are this is from real life. So you you gather your own cardboard boxes and an and and an item of your choice. You set it up, and again you use the scaling tool. Um, and my tip here is this is charcoal. Now we had graphite before. This is charcoal. You might want to try it out, uh, might want to try out your charcoal on whatever paper you're going to be using. Um, this paper, it was interesting because, so you're going to be doing stuff like this. And as you can see, I mean, it does that anyway, right? No matter on what paper, but this paper, I mean, it basically just slides right off. I mean, I'm just using my fingers and it, I can almost erase it with my fingers because it just doesn't, the paper just doesn't take it, you know. Um, if it has a, this is a very smooth paper, um, the pear paper would have taken the charcoal much better. Um, I'm not saying I don't like this, but you might want to know it and do it consciously, choose it consciously. 
Um, so uh, you might just have to try out different options that you have and, and find out which paper you like best for whatever uh, material you're using. Uh, and you might want to do that before you do your whole sketch and then you realize the charcoal is just sliding right off of it. Um, they talk a lot about planes. Different planes meet, like here we have a plane that meets this plane. Um, and they have a different shade because of how the light hits it. Between two planes, you typically don't really have a line. And that's, that's something I see beginners do. They draw a lot of lines. Um, that's really only right in line drawings. <laughs> um, and where you do shading, um, you don't often have real lines. It's just two planes of different shades meet. There is no line in between the two planes. Very rarely, like here, where this is an actual shadow, so it's it's not a line in that sense. So you want to be careful not to be drawing too many lines, but be, be aware that the line is really created by two planes meeting. I hope that makes sense. So now came Audrey. Um, week three is portrait week, your first portrait week. Uh, she has a bit of a mustache because uh, I used the charcoal I, <laughs> too heavily um, before finding the right line and then I wasn't able to erase it anymore <laughs> and then I used white chalk. Uh, now she has a bleached mustache, but oh well. Forgive me, Audrey. You're beautiful anyway. <laughs> uh, it's quite large. Um, they usually tell you how large approximately it should be. Um, my tip that I have here, make the size of the source either quite a lot different from what you're going to be drawing or painting or exactly the same. Um, if it's just a little smaller in the source and you're not using the scaling tool, you're just eyeballing it, you're gonna, you're automatically gonna like match the size of the, sh of the source to what you're drawing. So, um, it, it really helped me to have her a lot smaller, um, in the source and then blow it up. Um, or I would have needed her basically at this size. Um, so at least be mindful of that, that your eye is going to want to transfer, uh, if, if you're not using scale tool, if you're just using your eye, you're going to want to automatically do the same size. And so for likeness, because as I said, um, we were mainly eyeballing this and using scale tool. To achieve a good likeness, I have a bit of a trick that I'm actually sharing in an extra video. Um, on this channel, so you might want to go and watch that video. So then we did the so-called monster painting. It's called monster because the very first layer, uh, she well, she looks a bit monstrous. I was really, really looking forward to that. You actually get, I think, one of those lessons. Uh, you get the monster painting lesson for free when you sign up for the waitlist. And I was so looking forward to that. And then I ended up being disappointed with myself. So the obvious tip that I have, don't expect too much of yourself. And along with that goes, don't compare yourself with others. There is a difference between looking at other people's work and, and analyzing it, like analyze what you love about it or analyze what you don't like about yours. Um, and analyzing is very different from judging. Don't judge. Um, and, and a very important thing is do not ever compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. It's not being fair to yourself. So you don't know how much experience the other people have, you know, or how little they have. So, you know, considering that that woodpecker was my first oil painting ever, um, I think I did fairly okay. Of course, other people produce more amazing paintings. But also, I have had a lot of painting experience, though not with oil. So somebody who has not had any painting experience might also not want to compare themselves to me because we have different setups. So don't be unfair to yourself. Your, whatever your level is, is different from anybody else's. 
So analyze, yes, judge, no. Week four is still life week. Um, five still lives. Uh, where's the first one that I did? Um, the first one was made from life. Uh, you set it up yourself. It's charcoal again. Um, they say that anyway, but it's my tip. Listen to what they're saying. They suggest uh, three to five items. And I did what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, if you want to keep it within the time limit that they suggest, you might also want to <laughs> keep the items down to three to five. Um, you're setting yourself up for less stress and less rush. Um, then three oil paintings. These are each, they're done so-called a la prima, which means in one sitting, each one was two hours long. Same here, don't choose a million items. Uh, why would you do that? <laughs> I'd like to make it hard on myself sometimes. Maybe I, I was getting a little cocky because I was always able to keep the time limits so well um, that in week four, suddenly I found myself uh, rushing and, and not making it. Um, I do like my very first uh, still life very much, though I do have to be honest and say this one, I went back a few days later and added a few final touches uh, when it was dry because um a la prima means you you know because you're layering all the paint in one sitting it's going to be very wet paint a lot of wet paint on the canvas and um yeah it just couldn't take anymore i couldn't get any details in anymore um and so i i added a few final touches because i liked the painting so much that i didn't want to finish it um, I hate this one, that's why I'm standing here, um, but, you know, move on, because lesson I learned a lot by, it's just, the composition is not successful, I chose items that are not great, um, and I rushed through some important things, like this plate is so off shape-wise, um, I should have been more careful um, when doing that. Uh, things like that it was just not so successful um i'm happy with the third one which is a more classic um still life um and in the last one somehow the lessons started settling um and i started understanding how a la prima works um because you still have to be very careful with the first layer being thinner um, and then you build up the paint and so that you don't just slap on too much paint in the very beginning and then, you know, nothing works anymore. Um, it just seemed that they didn't say some important things uh, in the first lesson. So either they didn't say it or I didn't hear it. Um, but my tip here is read the textbook. I had kind of forgotten that. Uh, we get this great textbook um, that really, you know, gives all the lessons again in writing. I don't think that there is extra information that you don't get if you only watch the videos, but it's just a different way of learning if you read things. And if I had read the textbook, <laughs> I would um, possibly not have made these mistakes that I, that I made on these two paintings. Um, because maybe the information would have stuck. So read the textbook. And then there is a last still life. This is charcoal again. Um, and this is made from a, a photo, photograph. So it's not a real life still life, but you take a photograph, you choose one of their sources, you make that. And um, I have a tip that goes along with this or any really charcoal or um, graphite drawing um, which concerns the kneadable eraser that you're going to be using because um, I, I myself have learned a really great way to use this thing and I don't see too many people who seem to know this trick so I made an extra little video that you can watch on my channel. So these were all the artworks that we did within the first month or the first four weeks. 
Um, I have one uh, general one, another tip. If you happen to have to wear reading glasses like me, do not forget to step away from the canvas. So it's a little bit problematic because I need, I need it for this distance. And then I, you know, if I get further away, they're uncomfortable, but you need to keep stepping away to see what you're doing, whether what you're doing has the effect that you want or just to generally keep an overview of what you're doing. So yeah, um, you really, really want to not forget to step away. That's a tip with or without reading glasses, but it can be a bit tricky with reading glasses. Also, if you have still life set up, then you have to look at like this, <laughs> oh, whatever. Schedule your drawing sessions, maybe Sunday evening or Monday morning. Um, I always need to click on every lesson and look at how long um, the drawing set, the you know, separate drawing sessions are, and then schedule them into my week. Um, so that I can set myself up for success because if I'm not organized like that, um, I might not be able to jam them all in. Uh, also because of drying times, like I said, right? So I really, really want to do this within the given time. I mean, within the, the one year time, I, I really have my mind set to that. I do not have a mentor. So uh, my next tip concerns accountability because nobody is going to call me and say, Hey, Katya, where's your assignment? Um, because I got, I also paid the whole thing in one go. So I have all the lessons already. Um, and nobody really, except for me cares about whether I finish it in time. I care a lot, but you can help yourself with accountability buddies. There is a forum that I highly suggest that you're a little bit active in. Um, just exchanging yourself with other people um, and maybe find a couple of people that, that started at the same time as you and you can build up like a small group um, who, you know, and keep yourself accountable. Um, I'm doing it with this YouTube channel. I hope to <laughs> post every month. Um, and if you're watching this in the future, you can already see whether I'm successful or not. <laughs> I really hope I am, and I really hope that at the end of December, I'm going to be done with this program. We shall see. So my last tip, if you are considering doing this, um, if there is, you know, if you're wondering, is this going to be worth it? Is this the right thing for me? My tip is do it, do it, do it. The price is incredible. What, what you're getting, it's so structured and the, the lessons are so in-depth. These people really know what they're doing. Um, do it. Just do it. So if you think this video was interesting, uh, please give me a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe. Uh, you know how YouTube works. This channel is so new. Uh, nobody's going to find me unless uh, I get a little bit of traction. So that would be fabulous. Like I said, drop me a line if you have more questions that I did not address. Um, and I will address it next time. Thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe to my channel, but you can also subscribe to my newsletter on my homepage. And of course, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, if you subscribe to my newsletter on my homepage, you will receive uh, coupons for some of my art that I sell um, soon. I will sell originals, but I'm also selling prints and I'm selling some of my art on products. And you will receive a coupon if you subscribe to my newsletter. So why don't you do that? Everything is linked and I really, really hope to see you again. So take care.